homage you members to possess their stupidity and embarrass you into exile. Boxing archives and facts left this very lengthy paragraph under my most recent video regarding the situation between Billy Joe Saunders, yeah. Walter Contendoquo potentially stepping in yeah. in his place, and Demetrius Andre. He left this comment and it reads, Ha ha, my boy ring IQ hating on Alvarez. Alvarez? I didn't even mention Canelo anywhere in that video. Did you? But okay. <laughs> You can't have an OG sitcom intro without punking Petty Joe Saunders who cries Canelo not once in your vid. Why would I? Let's see, Ring. We got Ingle who had Kid Galahad put for an actual steroid, BJS using a weight-cutting agent, Brooke, notoriously known as cutting 25 pounds like a UFC fighter, and Ingle already giving testimony on how to beat the system for weight cutting. The whole Ingle gym is suspect. Billy Joe Saunders is getting stripped. What's better is reasonable cause. Canelo, whom everybody claimed use Clen to cut weight for fat, LOL, for a fighter who's always in shape versus Billy Joe Saunders who walks around like a fat ass on his off season. I like boxing fans are naive in thinking boxers can just be fat two months down the line to looking ripped as some fantasy casual hitting the local gym. Fuck out of here. Who said that? You's got that Pauly syndrome hating on Canelo. Is that right? Uh, Does that say? Canelo era with a little Mexican flag emoji. Dick Rotter. And what I find truly bizarre about this paragraph of butthurt is at no point in time since Saunders has tested positive for a banned substance have I ever advocated for his innocence. So what the fuck are you talking about? If you ask me, Billy Joe Saunders is just as suspicious as Canelo Alvarez. Those bo bo Both of those guys are two peas in the same pot. Both tested positive. So I, I literally don't even know what the fuck this guy's talking about. Dick Rod. Perhaps if his asshole wasn't pulsing with pain, he would have scrolled down just a little further while stalking this page, which he likes to frequent for some reason. He, he would have scrolled down and seen the video titled Sketchy Ho Saunders or Shifty Ho Saunders. I forgot what I put there where I talked in more detail how you know one positive test is all it takes for you to lose credibility with the fans mm -hmm. no matter what Frank Warren says no matter what you cat and Wada say in spite of all of those convenient explanations at the end of the day one positive test is all it takes in this sport for you to be viewed as a ped cheat and the same way that that applies to Billy Joe Saunders is the same way it applies to Canelo which is the real reason that this fucking fanboy is here. Dick Rodder. You notice how this guy's got all this attention for detail when it comes to the Engel Gym and Billy Joe Saunders and Cal Brook and, Kel and any kid Galahad. You notice how he's got an eye for detail when it comes to all of that shit. Good job. But when it comes to Canelo. Oh, oh, you're a, you've got Pauly Malinaji syndrome. You're a hater. <laughs> so, so what are you trying to convince me of? That I have every reason to be suspicious of the Ingle Gym, but I have no reason to be suspicious of Canelo Alvarez? Seriously? Is, is, is that what you're saying? Seriously? Because the funniest part about all of this is nobody is debating or defending. whether or not there's something suspicious about Billy Joe Saunders' story. I myself already said that people are going to be suspicious of that shit regardless of what he's got to say. But if we're going to go ahead and we're going to play that game, what? You've got all this attention for detail when it comes to Billy Joe Saunders, but you don't see anything odd. Odd. I cannot see. I'm legally blind. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. About Canelo Alvarez going from 155 to 154, all the way up to 164. He skipped an entire division wow. only to come back down to 160 and subsequently, mm -hmm. subsequently, test positive for a weight cutting agent. Coincidence? You, you don't see anything suspicious about that. You don't see anything suspicious about Canelo Alvarez being associated with gas tank issues for the better part of his career, then mysteriously, somehow, some way he did it, resolving those issues. Like Billy? Only to test positive for a weight cutting agent which gives you a stamina benefit Coincidence? in the subsequent months after that fight. That, no, no, that's not suspicious at all. You sure? It's the Canelo era. Dick Rodder. <laughs> if you ask me, uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo Alvarez, they're on the same boat. Both of those situations are pretty much the same thing. And the only real difference between them is that one guy's got enough marquee value attached to his name that he can get away with it. One guy's got enough marquee value and enough dick riders like yourself trying to explain it away <laughs> that the same organizations that are supposed to be policing the activity of the fighters, penalizing the fighters in just these kinds of situations, one guy's got enough of that going on that he can actually get away with it. But the situations are pretty much the same. You can't be suspicious of Billy Joe Saunders and not be suspicious of Canelo Alvarez and the same works in reverse. Write this down. Whereas you, you, you want me 
to be suspicious of Saunders, which I already am, and I said as much. Already. You want me to be suspicious of him, but you're mad that I'm suspicious of Canelo too? <laughs> well, you, my friend, are a dick rider. <laughs> and here's the thing. You could be a dick rider. You know, you could fantasize about putting all of Canelo Alvarez's... Testicles. ...manhood in, in, in your tonsils. You know, you can you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. But why a dick rider like you would continually come to this channel is the real mystery. That's the question. You see, I can completely understand why someone might be looking at Billy Joe Saunders right now in a very suspicious way because, well, I am too. But what I can't understand is how somebody could have this great eye for detail when it comes to Billy Joe Saunders, but resoundingly claim that Canelo is innocent. Yeah, right. When Canelo... You know, if we compare these two guys, in the last two, three years, he's moved up and down in weight far more than Billy Joe Saunders has. That's a fact. So if anybody's got a need for a weight-cutting agent, it would be the guy that went from 155 to 154, up to 164, then back down to 160. And it just so happens that this is the same guy who tested positive for a weight-cutting agent. Yet according to Box and Archives, oh, we can look at Billy suspicious, we just can't look at Canelo suspicious. Why not? Why? Because you fantasize about putting his dick in your mouth? <laughs> I'ma tell you, I don't know why these kind of guys keep showing up on this channel expecting me to shill for their favorite fighters, but you're in the wrong place and you should know that by now. <laughs> That if all you want to do is dick ride Canelo and any other fan fighter that you're a fan of, if that's all you want to do, then you don't need to come to this channel for that. You got your own little channel where you can make your own little dick riding videos about riding dick. dick. So go ride dick over there dick. and kindly get off mine. Dick. Because the idea that somebody like you is going to try to tell me to call it down the middle, Ball. the idea that somebody like you is going to try to tell me to be unbiased, Shit. that's the real motherfucking comedy. I want to play. You say we are the press come. This is a real fight. Come on. We're Listen, announcing that fight is on. Listen. So at this point Listen. in time, my mind is on. It's all the time. So I want to feel some power. power. You gonna oh. feel every power you need to feel. You gonna feel everything go. you need to feel. Let's have a take Come on. Let's do it. 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 Listen. Please, let's have a spa. Will you invite me? Let's give the fans a warm up of what they want. And I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna give these people a preview. Come on, man. Or what's gonna be? Hey, let's make it happen. Come on, let's step back. Let's make it happen. Listen, everyone, step back. Let's have a spa. No, no, no. Let's make it happen. No, 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 no. These are the sights and sounds of the Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury press conference. Ow! They're promoting the fight, and you know what? I have to say they're doing a damn good job doing it. The press conference appears to be just as fun as people anticipated it would be. Years ago. Tyson Fury, a big shit talker, arguably, if not the best pound-for-pound -pound shit talker in the sport of boxing. A shit talker on the level that he got inside of Klitschko's mind. Open your mind. Quaid. And threw him off his game. A game that remained undeterred, unwavered for something like nine or ten years while he defended those world titles. Fury got in his head. The Gypsy King is one hell of a shit talker. And we'll talk about the relevance of that in a few. Uh, a little later, the relevance of that to the fight itself. But, um, you know, even before all of this became what it is today, or at least what it's becoming. You know, in 2017, 2016, people talked about how a, how a press conference between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, you know, that if those guys were ever going to fight, that the buildup would be a lot of fun given both of those guys' personalities. And, you know, it appears that those assertions were right way back when, when people made them, that, you know what, yeah, if you ever got these two guys, you know, two guys talking shit to each other, it makes for some very entertaining sound bites. I play. You say, but on to the subject at hand, fight. Tyson Fury definitely showed up for this press conference you understand he did and while there still is some residual skepticism i mean even now there are people that are still you know they still don't feel convinced that they're still not convinced that these guys are gonna fight they're saying things like you know tyson fury is trying to taunt deontay wilder into hitting him why taunt him into hitting him because he knows that there's a clause in the contract that stipulates if there is any physical violence leading up to the fight the fight itself would be off. In that way, there are people that feel that Tyson Fury is deliberately trying to sabotage the fight by antagonizing Wilder to the point that there will be physical violence. And in doing so, he'll find a way to get out of the fight. Tyson Fury will use that as a way to get out of the fight. There are people out there that believe this shit. Whether, whether you guys want to accept it or not, there are still people out there that are skeptical. And it's for the reasons that I've been saying, you know, all along, that there are people out there that they don't really trust Tyson Fury, that they don't really feel 
like he wants this. There are those people. But I'm going to reiterate what I said and what I've been saying for you know, some time now. As long as the boxing media continues to release new news, articles and stories and reports in regards to this fight, as long as that's going on, we have to operate on the assumption that these guys are going to fight. Hypothetically. So put your skepticism aside and put your thinking cap on for a second. Okay. On the premise that these guys do fight. Hypothetically speaking. You know, Tyson Fury seems to be trying to get into Deontay Wilder's mind. And, you know, for what it's worth, Tyson Fury, he's kind of good at Worked that. Worked on Klitschko. He does appear to be trying to get into Deontay Wilder's head as, you know, maybe a means to throw him off his game. But that's just it. Deontay Wilder, and I've said this before, he's not a methodologist. Nope. He's not a tactician. Nope. So if the, the game plan here is to get into his mind so that you can throw him off. Make him step out of character the night of the fight. Make mistakes. Get him to be out of his element the night of the fight. If that's what Tyson Fury's trying to do, then I don't think he'll be successful. Because unlike Vladimir Klitschko, Deontay Wilder is not this, uh, you know, controlled kind of guy. This calm, cool, centered and controlled. No, that's, that's not who he is. So talking shit to him leading up to a fight, it won't do much but make him angrier make him angrier which could result in him going for the gusto in the fight sooner than later essentially what i'm saying here is if you're trying to get in deontay wilder's head so that he starts making mistakes the night of the fight well that's an exercise in futility because deontay wilder makes mistakes all the time well, you ain't gotta get in his head thing to make a mistake deontay wilder making some kind of lapse in judgment during the fight that, 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 like, that, that, that's bound to happen. Deontay Wilder making a mistake sometime, and that, that's bound to happen. He makes mistakes all the time. You don't gotta get in his head for him to make a mistake. It's gonna happen. The thing is that in spite of the mistakes that he might make the night of the fight, one thing we're sure of, or at least one thing most of us are feeling, is that all it's gonna take is for Deontay Wilder to land once, and he may get Tyson Fury's respect. And once that happens, oh my God. Jesus take the wheel because Deontay Wilde is coming for the knockout. You see, trying to get inside of a guy's head, more often than not, that works on strategists and tacticians, guys who follow a game plan. But Deontay Wilde is not a game plan kind of guy. He's not that kind of a fighter. Deontay Wilde on a regular basis, in case you haven't noticed, is emotionally volatile. Already? And he's like this all on his own. You don't need to get into his head to make him this way. So if you do go as far as antagonizing him to make him this way, that just means that he's going to come after you sooner than later. And the knockout itself may come sooner than later. Because whether or not he can knock Tyson Fury out hinges on certain things that aren't going to suddenly change. Tyson Fury is not a very big puncher. No, sir. Tyson Fury's punch resistance is questionable. Yes, sir. Lest we forget, this is the guy that got dropped by Steve Cunningham. Steve Cunningham, who is really a cruiserweight. Tyson Fury may be able to outbox Wilder in those early rounds. He may be able to box circles around him in those early rounds. We've seen that kind of stuff before. It's not new. But I'll reiterate that as desperation sets in round by round, Deontay Wilder is going to become more and more aggressive and it's going to be harder for Tyson Fury to avoid him. He may resort to fighting negative and stop throwing because he's afraid of what might come back at him. Stay on the move. He may spend rounds circling the ring, effectively giving those rounds away to the oncoming Deontay Wilder who will undoubtedly be the aggressor. Tyson Fury, we know that he's a guy who, 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 who fights laterally. He's a guy who fights on the go punches on the go he's that kind of fighter so if there's a strategist in the ring believe me it's not Deontay Wilder it's Tyson Fury thus Tyson Fury trying to get into the mind of a guy who's already emotionally compromised a guy who's already volatile all its own all his own well that's not going to do anything but piss him off even more and if you piss him off even more he's going to come after you that much sooner the night of the fight Oh, you can hypothesize that maybe this is Tyson Fury's way of setting up an early knockout, but let's 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 put it this way. Luis Ortiz is a pretty heavy-handed guy. He is. I mean, I'm not trying to inflate Luis Ortiz like most of Wilder's sycophants, but Luis Ortiz is a heavy-handed fighter, and he is a skillful fighter. He is one of the elites, at minimum. You have to admit that, and if you can admit that, then you have to then admit that Wilder weathered the storm from what is arguably a bigger puncher than Tyson Fury. Maybe not more skilled, maybe not, but he is a bigger puncher than Tyson is. 
And Wilder went into deep waters with that bigger puncher. Bigger puncher than Tyson Fury. He had to dig deep to survive a very hard round. So the idea that maybe Tyson is trying to set up Wilder for an early knockout, I'm not buying it. I stand by my original prediction. Wilder, mid to late round knockout.